Oh, it's so wonderful to see you again. Come in and unwind. Welcome back to the Celestial Cafe, a podcast for the magical mind. So come, take a seat. Would you like something sweet? A star drop potion for the soul? Maybe an enchanted eclair as a treat? I just baked a batch of warm cookies with a dash of moonlight. I wonder what will happen if you take a little bite. Here's your bewitching beverage. Let each sip melt your worries away. It's time to open your mind. I wonder what magic awaits us today. All right, welcome back everyone to a, another episode of the Celestial Cafe podcast. This is our August monthly full moon check-in where we chat about the full moon and a uh, little information around that. We're going to change up the format just slightly this month and see how we like it. So we got Fuchsia's going to do a tarot card pull for us today. Dugsley will of course be your, um, what do they call him? Weatherman? What's the astrologer? Celestial, Celestial guide. Um, meteorologist what do they call them on news <laughs> yeah meteorologist yeah. Du- dukes will be our celestial guide and we'll be walking you through the astrology which apparently is a doozy so buckle up Ooh. for that um and mm-hmm. then there's going to be chatting with us about the sturgeon moon and i'm just here for the ride uh, you know so i'll probably be popping in with some of my like oh this is how i'm feeling so this must be how everyone else is feeling sag or sagittarius <laughs> moon nonsense but um <laughs> How's everyone doing? I hope you all have had a good August so far. We're stepping out of the summer months here in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and I guess buckling up and getting ready for fall and winter. So it's it's been a lot. Uh, the weather has been so disgusting here. Like, it's been raining 95 nonstop. and humid. Yeah. Like, just, oh, God. It, it was 72 degrees here today. It dropped down. Like, like, it, was, it was, like, 90 mm-hmm. and, like, 95% humidity two days ago. And then yesterday it dropped down to 75, and today it's also, like, in the 70s. I'm just like, thank you. That sounds nice, But I know yeah. this is just yeah, a nice. little, it's just a little respite before mid-August and September hit and September mm. is the worst here so I'm just so I'm not ready for summer to be over cooler from here on out yeah. me neither it makes I me am. sad thinking about I it I'm like really about to cry. <laughs> I do not I don't want to go through winter I'm not a wi- I'm not uh, a fan of winter I, I, I love, love winter, winter. Yeah. I, I love freaks. winter <laughs> we, so I'm in the snow belt in Ohio so we, our winter is like I think like each year, like the first of November, we get like five inches of snow, and then from there God. on out, it's just added yeah. on yeah. over and over. Exactly. And Love it's that. so much. Yeah. That's that's it's great if you don't have to go anywhere. Like, but <laughs> Chicago used to get like really like like really intense winters like that, and um, we don't get that much snow anymore. No. Um, which is kind of for me, it's sad. Um, we still get like the really cold days like negative 40s but um but like we don't get the snow and i'm like give me the snow like but we do get like our first snowfall usually like around Mm -hmm. halloween but it's just like Mm -hmm. a Mm -hmm. dusting and then um and that goes through like if i had my way i would live (laughs) here in the mountains in the summer and i would live in the south like um, maybe not Florida, but like that. <laughs> Sorry, Lumpy. Um, maybe, but Florida's like, but in the winter, I think Florida's probably livable. It's probably handleable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, this is uh, the Celestial Cafe podcast. If you are tuning in on our podcasting platforms, we do record this or we stream it. We record this in a live stream format um, on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash heyshadylady. And we also upload the video version of this podcast onto our YouTube channel, um, which the link for our YouTube channel is on our website at celestialcafe.org. We are still 70 subscribers away from getting our custom URL before we can give you all an easy URL format for that YouTube channel. True. So if you all want to drop a subscribe, um, that'd be sick, you know? <laughs> You'd be really cool. Yeah, that'd be baller. <laughs> Man, everyone would just think you were so cool. Yeah, uh, <laughs> everyone would be really impressed with you. That'd be so crazy. Um, and um, if you're listening on the podcasting platforms uh, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you want to drop us a review, it really helps us out on the podcasting platforms getting seen a little bit so we've got a bunch of plans we're really excited for uh where this show is going and i think you're gonna start to see a little more focused content from us on the um off like so when we're talking about we talk about the full moon once a month and we have another episode once a month that is just kind of a random spiritual topic so we were kind of brainstorming some ideas the other day and we want to touch into like shadow work and um get more into like topical like how can you deal with um 
I don't know, maybe spiritual imposter syndrome or like just like we want to get into more genre topics rather than just uh, full moon, which is why we added the extra episode. Um, I hope you all been liking the content so far. I'm very very happy with what we're doing very proud with what's going on so yeah if there's anything in particular you guys want to hear from us please let us know we have a discord we'd love to hear your insights uh some direction for us because as you know this is spiritual stuff we can go anywhere anywhere at all so if you have any preference I think that would help us narrow down some ideas. Ultimately. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so join us in the Discord. That link is also on our website. And um, yeah, I, so I guess we will introduce ourselves. So here at the Celestial Cafe, we love our drinks and our beverages. So we're going to introduce ourselves and talk about what we're drinking today. So let us know in chat what you've got to, to sip on while you enjoy our meanderings today i am hey shady lady i'm a variety content creator uh everywhere which means i don't know what the hell i do i don't have a niche that's what that means i'm just uh i'm just you show me. up she's just me and my <laughs> lee um <laughs> so um yeah and i'm here uh doing witchy stuff and i also do um a lot of cozy gaming i love modded safe like modded minecraft and modded stardew so i like to keep it cozy and chill i'm still struggling with my broken arm um i just got my six thousand dollar er bill so so let's go American healthcare system. Um, but I digress. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I found out you some... <laughs> it's not showing up on the camera, but Toasty is really showing us her. <laughs> like... She she thinks I have food and I do not. Um, <laughs> no, stop doing that. You're just knocking my crystals down. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I find out tomorrow if I get my cast off. So I'm hoping that tomorrow I go in and they take my cast off. I'm that hoping that's the, the chain of events. But today I am sipping two drinks. I have my coffee to get me through, you know, everything. Um, and this is a <laughs> um, Dunkin' Donut iced coffee like bottle that I get from the store. So it's, it's uh, an iced coffee with dark chocolate Hershey syrup and oat what? milk oat milk so it's like a it's like a chocolate milk ice latte i have a second drink and i'm try harding today so y'all are missing out if you're not on the video if you're not watching the video version of this podcast because i got a bottle thingy from uh the grocery store yesterday i think you call this like a decanter or something this is water but i put a bunch of fruit in it oh yummy i'm gonna keep this thing on my desk i figure i could make one like I could probably make one every uh, other day and then just fill the water up and keep using it. But it has... I keep meaning to do that and just don't. And then I have like a little cup here so I can just pour myself little sips of the water. But um, it's cute. got strawberry, kiwi, pineapple, and blueberry in it. So that's oh, my, little, my little combination. Um, and it basically... Wow, what a nice potion. It's delicious. It basically tastes like really watered down Capri Sun. <laughs> Oh, okay. um, so it's very refreshing. Um, it's a nice way to get my water and still enjoy the taste. And for my my mom even likes it. She's very picky. Um, what? But she was like, oh, that's not bad. So, but I was like, you could even add a little syrup to it if you wanted just like a little more, you know, sweetness. Mm. But I'm trying to step away from soda and step away from um, sugars as much as like, I should say, um, not not like natural sugars are fine, but like the the corn syrup and stuff. You know, I'm trying to trying to be a little Processed healthier. Processed sugars. <laughs> so I'm gonna start trying to tiptoe and figure good ways to tiptoe out of all of my really unhealthy addictions. <laughs> Dukes, what do you got? Hi. And who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? Well, it all began 28 years ago. I am Dukes Lee. I read tarot. Um, and I also talk about the stars. Those are two things I really enjoy doing in my spare time and also here on the podcast. Not the tarot part so much, but um, that's, that's going to be Fuchsia's game today. But I mostly talk about what's popping in the celestial realm. Um, and today I'm actually uh, drinkless. What? Uh, it's, drinkless yeah, in I'm, Seattle. Yeah, it's really tragic. Uh, we, but I have water. I, that's a lie. I, I lied. I have water, but I, I don't have any special drinks because I actually. I was going to say it was. It would be weird for you to not even have water. No, no, no. no. We, I am hydrated. I'm well hydrated. But uh, I was going to go make a tea, and there was no water left in the the Keurig because I was feeling lazy, and I was just going to use like plain water from the Keurig, and I was like lazy i i'm not feeling it the vibe check has failed so it is just water for me today uh but i think that's good i i 
I, I'm not feeling like I want a crazy fun drink today. I just, I want to chug some water. That's how I'm feeling. So I'm leaning into it. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to talk about the stars today. It's They're really fucked up. So it's going to be <laughs> really cool to discuss uh, <laughs> with everyone. Shout out to Aquarians everywhere. Good Lord. Yeah. I am Fuchsia. Hello. Um, I do mostly YouTube content. I um, make witchcraft videos about, well, tarot and... Um, journal with me with book of shadows and um all sorts of c different kind of witchcraft subjects and a uh, different a separate youtube channel for comfy cozy game reviews and um today i have my usual three drinks by me so <laughs> i've got my water um i've got my magic potion aka soda and um for my um for my tea, I have a blueberry green tea. So, nice. um, and I accidentally boiled it. And, like it's way, way too hot because we were getting ready for stream, and it was like, "What's the whistling noise?" For like a good two minutes, it was like, "What's that whistling noise?" Oh, it's my teapot. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little too hot right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That sounds good though. I actually just light again. I actually hate blueberry tea. But I always think it sounds good. Why are you such a liar today? I don't know what's going on. I, I love blueberry tea. It's, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm just the lies with my forked tongue. They're just falling out of me. I, I don't know what's going on. I apologize. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Congratulations. I gotta shut up. Okay, everyone, continue. My bad. <laughs> Panthera, what about you? And I gotta say that. Um, I'm only just now noticing how tan you look. So it looks like oh. the Renaissance Festival has been sun sunbathing you. I'm really jealous because I wanted to spend this summer out in the sun and get a little bit of a tan. And then I broke my freaking arm. Oh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, little does everyone know that um, actually I am under a booth the entire time. <laughs> Whoa. You look like you've gotten but a lot of sun, though. This past mm. week, um, with me and my boyfriend both being sick from COVID, we were trying to take the dog on a walk like every mm. day, uh, just to like the. We have a park right next to us where if we go early enough, no one else is there except for us. So we've been trying to to go out like every day with the dog, and so that he, then he like sleeps and he lets us sleep. It's, oh, it's just healing. it's a but, stark contrast with Panthera actually looking tan and then me right underneath like my pale ghost white just <laughs> I am never going gonna... to Florida at the end of this month so Ooh. we'll to see maybe after that I'll be a nice golden brown like like perfectly toast to toast um, <laughs> but I am Panthera and I'm the Farrowwood Witch it's nice to meet you guys um <laughs> <laughs> I make educational witchcraft uh, content on my blog, YouTube, and everything like that. You can find me on pretty much all the social media platforms. I am also working the Great Lakes Medieval Fair this summer. This upcoming weekend is our last weekend. So if you haven't made it out and you've been wanting to, definitely come out. It's supposed to be a great time. I think this one's superhero weekend, so the costumes what? I'm sure will be fun. Cool. That's fun. <laughs> That's cute. I can't decide if I want to do full Deadpool and a kill or not i think i might die though i don't know if i can <laughs> oh, handle God, the full yeah. mass yeah that'd be so, <laughs> but, hot. so i might just medieval it but um and yeah so i also do a lot of role play fantasy style content i have an ongoing D, &D campaign and, and stuff like that so if you like role playing fantasy nerdery i'm the gal well, <laughs> drop that down Chop that down, everybody. So it's good to see everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are going to be chatting about the full moon in Aquarius today. Um, and I think to kick us, kick our conversation off, me and Fuchsia are going to kind of do a little bit of an intuitive moment here. So Fuchsia, if you want to start shuffling, oh, and I'll yeah. just kind of ramble a little bit um, about the feelings, I would say, I don't know. It feels to me right now, feels like it's a... An, a, um, a liminal space. I really have been enjoying that phrase this whole year, but it feels like it's like a limbo, an in-between, a purgatory. It feels uncomfortable and it feels like 
a waiting moment for the next thing to happen. Like it's like um, a po- I, I, we were joking about what to call this episode, and it feels like it's not the calm before the storm because it feels like the storm is happening. It's, it's like the pressure building. Up. Yeah, it's like we're we're in the storm so much that it's just become a plateau of the storm. I don't know how to to, the to put eye it. Of the storm. It's it's not quite the eye of the storm though because I don't feel like things are calm. Mm. I feel yeah. like it's becoming are, the new normal. Almost. Yeah, it's just yeah. like we've been braving this weather so so much that now mm-hmm. it's just we've adjusted <laughs> and, and the new normal yeah yeah now it's yeah the new normal the the <laughs> um but a lot of things have shifted so it it feels out. like this has been I, I like what Dukesley said before we went live. Dukesley said this is like a climax moment. Um I feel like this has been one of the most stressful and crazy years that I've had in like five to seven years. Like this feels like a a really intense moment, an intense year and things are just building and building and building. And when I look back at where I was eight, nine months ago, even if we want to go all the way back to last summer, I was looking at some of my social media posts from last summer and I was like, holy shit, I was in a whole (laughs) different like everything was like, different. Who is that? Everything was different. <laughs> I was dealing with a completely different emotional situation as far as like my, I've been talking a lot about boundaries lately, but looking at how far I've come in a year and it's one of my, I have a poster on one of my walls that says so much can change in one year. It's one of my favorite like little pieces of art that I have up. It's like a collage art that I made. Um, and every time I look at that poster, I think back and I'm like, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. And then I look mm-hmm. at it now and I'm like, not a lot of the things that I wanted to change have changed, but so much really has changed. Um, and and then it's dealing with the changes and accepting the changes. And I think maybe there's a there's a bit of a moment here that we can we might be able to check in with ourselves and see if you're changing in the way that you want to be can you read can you redirect maybe it feels like i could redirect my attention a little bit i could read there's still like time to make some it's like you're trying to land a plane and are you going to hit the right runway um are you going to land in the right state you could make a last minute adjustment right here and you could land in a different state um right because you're you're right at the state border i hope that metaphor is hitting um (laughs) but it's almost getting to a point where you can't you're not going to be able to shift your attention too much more at least through the year so we're looking like the towards the the energy for the end of the year like i feel like i can still kind of um correct things so i could decide in other words to put it in like a personal perspective for me i could decide to just kind of succumb to my trauma and sorrow of the broken arm and lethargy and everything oh i'm such a failure well i could fall into the misery of it and then not make any affirmative action for the rest of the year and just say well 2022 is a bust you know might as well just wait for the next year um kind of was yeah it does feel like it was a bust but i feel like i've conquered a lot if that makes sense i think i've learned a lot about myself this year yeah i might not have like achieved much but at the same time i feel like i'm learning what i need to do to be able to take those next steps to to achieve yeah it's like this beat was like down. a foundational year I, i've been beat yeah down that's how i feel like, i am uh exhausted but at the same time I f- and angry i feel like <laughs> i don't want to test my luck because worse things could happen so i don't want to be <laughs> like i'm but, still living but better things could also happen that's what i'm saying though is like i don't want to be like this is the worst year of my life yeah i'm not feeling and then, that like, i'm just like Ugh. xyz Definitely dies a tomorrow or year, something though. like i yeah. i don't want to i don't want to tempt fate i don't want to uh, but it has been a very difficult year um for me emotionally i have not felt this isolated maybe ever in my life um and it's self-imposed isolation it's very hermit energy it's very hanged yeah. man energy hanged um, man. Yeah. it's i it's and it's kind of like i have to conquer this um or else is what it feels like or else i'm gonna <laughs> doom to repeat the same thing over and over and over again and i have to have this yeah. moment of isolation in order to um overcome the maybe toxic codependency that I have, the need for constant people around me. And so I have to just sit in the uncomfortability. Um, the wounds yeah. have to heal. Yeah, I have to be comfortable with this to, to get over, right? Um, so I feel like I'm 
in and and there's so much more to come i said like, i wish more had changed in the last year um i'm forever like regretting my like my weight loss journey not being further like not even changing at all that feels like nothing has changed in my health i tried to make an attempt to like work on my health and then i feel punished mm -hmm. from the universe right so then it's it's like is it not time for me it just i'm so frustrated i don't know if i'm the only one feeling this energy but i'm so frustrated with feeling like I just keep trying and I'm waiting for a break. I'm waiting for something to, to work. I'm waiting for something to fall into place and things to make sense and feel like I'm actually, um, I don't know. And nothing ever does. It always feels like I'm still behind. Like I'm still like. It's funny because you just said you're waiting for a break. You got one. <laughs> uh, and oh, no. I think like, like not even means like, you know, like I swear, like, like to break your arm means to find rest. It's forced rest. Yeah. But like it, it I, I think you're being offered a straight up moment to just like heal, sit, yeah. patient. Yeah. Hold like, your cat. Toasty knows I, I'm self self flagellating and she's like, quit it. <laughs> <laughs> like I had my tower year last year. Like I say, like I went through the entire major arcana last year. It was a rough year. It was a lot. But um but at the same time, I like so I'm not feeling like that, but I'm feeling what you just talked about about like I've been putting in like my part, I've been doing the effort and I'm still like I'm waiting on other things and I'm waiting on other people and I'm like, I've done my part, but I'm still waiting for that break because I can't do anything more at yeah. this moment in time. And so I just have to wait and I hate it. <laughs> it's just like, I feel like, like things should be coming. Things should like, but I'm making no progress, even though I'm trying i'm making no progress and i mean probably making progress in the long term but like right now it looks yeah, like i'm not that's if, such a lesson in and of itself like, it looks like and it feels like i'm not making any progress right yeah. now even though i'm putting in the work and that's the frustrating yeah. part it, the, the progress will pop up when you least expect it i think because that's how a lot of like my work works where mm -hmm. it's just like Oh, wait, wow. I just approached this situation calmly, collectively, and uh, I peacefully when normally like a year ago, I would have like flipped my lid, you know, like that kind of energy. That's too, true. Where, like, I, you, you, I look at the change of my temperament. I feel yeah. like I mm -hmm. have changed internally. And I think that's why I'm frustrated is so much about what I'm going through. I mean, I guess like phys but physically I'm broken, right? <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. on the, on the outside, I look broken. I don't, and that's but physically that's you're healing actually internally. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but you're, you're, you're silver lining of the, the storm cloud right now. Like, um, I feel like internally I'm changing, but externally I'm not changing. And I think that's where a lot of my frustration is coming from is that I want to change externally more than, mm -hmm. Any, I, w I want to change so much that I'm seeing a physical reflection of that as well. And that that's a lot to do with like trying to adjust my diet, trying to become more physically active. And I'm not seeing that. And I, I wonder if maybe there's more internal work to do before those changes can start to fall into place. Yeah. Um, which frustrates me because I'm like, how much more work could I possibly do? And like, I it, it just... It's it's very much like I, I feel like I'm approaching a moment and I saw someone in chat say like always feels like a step or two behind. Um and I'm I feel like I'm approaching a moment of like almost like a breaking point. I feel like it's like getting pushed almost to a breaking point. And if enough things could if enough other things happen, like two or three other like tragedies or traumas or, you know, a tree falls on my house and breaks the side of the house in or my car's tire pops off while I'm driving. Just, just a couple other of these like, like wheel of fortune reversed moments, then I'm going to just McFreakin lose McFreakin it. McFreakin lose it. I don't even it. know what will, what, what that will look like, but it will be a total, I think just a total breakdown. And I don't know, you know, I'm trying to just keep slogging through it. And that's what I feel like this energy is right now. And that's why I feel like it's so difficult to even define. And for me to come up with a title for our, our stream today was like, it's just, it's 
difficult, but it's gentle at the same time. It's like a gentle stress. I don't, I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. Like it's just building and it's a frog. I am a frog that is being boiled and I say am, less. I am oh. almost at my boiling point. Like that's the thing is it, it, the temperature is being slowly cranked up around me and I'm just adjusting to it and accepting it because it's such a gradual crank up of the stress feeling over time or the, the, it's not stress isn't quite the right word either but it's just like oh my god how much more can tension I, tension it, tension's yeah, a good like word. it's tension pressure um mm -hmm. just rock and hard yeah. place feel like a bungee cord that's being like stretched and stretched and stretched like between like two vehicles or something and like it's it's gonna give eventually but mm -hmm. yeah and we're like i mean we're waiting for that to happen not like I mean, like, it's going to happen one way or another. It would be great if it happened in a favorable circumstance. But, like, either way, we're waiting to see what happens. But we're just waiting right now. I and know. if it makes you feel any better, the astrology mirrors all of this. Uh, so uh, it, this you're not alone, I think, is a big statement. I'm always here, unsure I if I just want to, like, emotionally word flow at the start of these. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's so much of, like, how I channel whatever like mm -hmm. how i how i deliver the messages is like what just mercurial and I, things i've noticed it a lot since i've started doing tarot readings for other people and i've started researching astrology is i'm an extremely sensitive person and my emotional feelings um are usually I, I can I can sift through the, the stories that I'm going through and see what the energy is that's coming down. And then it's manifesting yeah. in a certain storyline in my life. But I can see the energy. So the energy here just feels like things are just boiling and boiling and boiling. And we're getting better um, at holding all like I'm imagining someone who's who's holding those little sticks and spinning like 18 plates above their head. We're getting better at balancing all of this stuff. Um, and it's uh -huh. but it continues to like the challenge never stops. That's that's what it is. It's like you think you start to master something and then you realize there's another level and it never stops. You're just constantly being stretched to a newer limit. And that's something, why like when does it end? <laughs> something I talked about my therapist a few years ago uh, was like at the time I wasn't going to school. I didn't have a job uh, and I was just like really, really focused on like my mental health and just like putting all my time and energy into that. And I was telling her, I was like, how do people have a family, hold a full time job? Uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know, like have friends and do anything when there's just this constant human based pressure and uh growth and problems that are constantly having like do people just like ignore them that's the npcs right they're just ignoring them and doing their nine to fives and just taking the easy way out and that they avoid i don't but i don't know so that i would go so far to say I'm the confused. easy way out but like imagine if you did have like children and a nine to five you don't have I I, yeah, you don't have the I emotional could energy. Not do, I couldn't focus on myself. I would have to sacrifice everything for either the kid or the job. Like, um, it, uh, yeah, so it. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know how people do all of them at the same no. time. And No, that's honestly mm -hmm. a problem with parenting. Yeah. Like, like yeah. it is something like that all my friends who have children, like they talk about because it always ends if they don't get time to themselves, it always ends with like three months down the line crying in the bathtub. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love Eating that. a pint of ice cream. <laughs> That's me now for the human still, race. though, without children. So, God, yeah, that's really I'm oh, child God. free and I'm falling apart. Like, <laughs> I know, all I have is a dog and a cat. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, Fuchsia, did you uh, get any tarot cards pulled out? So, I did. Um, so, I pulled the Six of Swords. No uh, which... way! Okay, yeah. sorry. We're going to so, talk a lot so, about the Six of Swords. So, so okay. it's actually, yeah. No um, way. So, this is, this is from the Somnia Tarot deck. So it's someone in like the bottom, the basket of a heart, hot air balloon, and all the um, there are swords underneath mm. it that have cut all the all the ties that hold it to the ground, and it's you know floating up and 
out into over the ocean um, and the guy's back is turned away from us and so the six of swords is all about it like it looks like there are graves like yeah. with swords stabbed into the ground that is a really cool image for the six of swords sand piles uh with the swords hanging out and like and you see like the sand mm -hmm. the sand um like falling oh, out the of the sand bags. bags i yeah, see the sand okay. bags. yeah so um so they're releasing the weight of, and burying yeah, shit yeah the six of swords <laughs> is all about like it's like a bittersweet moving on like you know mm, it's, it's a like it's a good thing to be moving on but it's not a happy moving on but it's you know it's going to lead to happiness but it's like at the moment it's just like i need to leave this i need to cut these cords which is like cutting the cutting the strings holding this um hot air balloon and mm -hmm. um and like i need to release all this and i need to move forward but it's not a happy feeling about no. doing that it's, there, um, there's a lot of melancholy attached yes to... melancholy is definitely the word i think of when i yeah. when i see this card um so uh yeah it's just like 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 we were talking about just like things aren't things don't feel great right now but we're trying to move forward and it was actually interesting because i was looking up this card and i was looking up because all the cards have astrology assigned to them so i was looking it up and guess what sign six of swords is it's aquarius <laughs> so. well let me just tell you that today uh it, the full moon is going to be in the second decan of aquarius ruled by mercury and once you know that's the six of swords so that's why I was like, no way, no way. So it, 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 that completely lines up. That's exactly what's happening astrologically. Is six and of it swords feels energy. a lot like what I was talking about, too, because there's so much of like leaving things behind that are that are such a hard thing to turn away from and, yeah. and, and like release. And Vices, it is yeah. addictions. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to do that. You're walking away from something, mm -hmm. but you're going on a new journey and you're getting to newer heights. Yeah. Yep. And then the thing I really yeah. like about this deck with the Six of Swords particularly is that the King of Swords is the like opposite. Like you, if you see the cards, like they are clearly like looking at each other. The King of Swords is sitting on his throne with the sword stuck in the ground in front of him. And the sandbags from the hot air balloon are like being mm. lifted into the air. And it really speaks to me as like the King of Swords is all about intellect and like knowing mm. how to um, like knowing how to be a good leader. And it really speaks to me with the Six of Swords is like knowing when it's time to cut that and time to move on. Um, yeah. So. The, definitely a card where the hardest lesson to learn is when, mm -hmm. you know, like because it's going to suck and it's going to mm -hmm. feel bad. So you have to make sure you do it at the right time or else you're going to get sadder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> one thing and, that kind of so one of my decks, um, it's the, the returning of, of Panthera Tarot, but it's all mm -hmm. big cats. And the Six of Swords is like two snow leopards that are like moving off into new territory. They're leaving their old territory behind and moving into new territory. And one thing that has kind of stuck out with me recently is I've been working on training dogs lately. Oh. And movement dissipates stress that's one of like the, mm -hmm. the biggest things to learn is like mm -hmm. so if your dog is like maybe another dog is coming down the path and you're trying to like walk by don't just sit your dog down and have them stay perfectly still and expect them to behave properly yeah. instead find a place where you can walk off with mm -hmm. them and keep them moving just as long mm -hmm. as you keep them moving they're able to cool. to relax more and show better behaviors so yeah, that's, that's actually... such an interesting thing with six of swords because it's like movement dissipates stress so and sometimes too i think like when we're feeling overwhelmed we tend to think that it's like an all or nothing thing sometimes but sometimes you just gotta like move a little bit you just gotta like maybe you don't move to the next city over right away right. but maybe you get out of your house yeah. that day right yeah. like it, it doesn't always have to be like the huge movement i know but i just remember like, when i was something. talking about stress recently and panther was like try taking a walk and i'm like we don't have yard here and i don't, i'm and then i was like because I live literally on a mountain like it's like a, a steep like almost I don't know 50 degree angle of my front yard um, 
And then I was like, and I'm also scared because there's bears wandering around. And now guess what's been on our front porch the last two mornings? A baby bear <laughs> drinking the, the sugar water out of our hummingbird feeders. <laughs> so the Panthera was recently telling me to, because I was, I'm, I'm very overwhelmed emotionally right now and was like, go take a walk, go take a walk. And I was like, I'm not just trying to give you excuses. I swear there's bears right now that I'm scared of. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm worried mama bear is gone. But at the same time, I don't want mama bear to be gone because this is, he's a baby. He's like, the side he's probably mm -hmm. no one asked i'm sorry I'm, this bear is like on my mind right now he's probably <laughs> like 50 or 60 pounds like he's not a he's a baby bear like i could pick him up and carry him <laughs> like, Aww, um, thing, right? yeah Aww. so if he doesn't watch it i will um they're brown bears so they're not that bad um they're not yeah that's what we have around uh, here yeah. mm -hmm. The little babies. Anyway, no one asked about my brown bear tangent, but here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm only sound to hear about brown bears. <laughs> um, so that's the particular. tarot card for today. So the six of swords. And, it's going to lean yeah. into the moon. So. It's, and, and the thing that I like about the six of swords, too, is this is a very intentional decision yes. to mm -hmm. cut the bags that hold your hot air balloon down so you can lift yes. off into the sky mm -hmm. um and then you have to leave the swords behind too so you're also mm -hmm. there's a picking and choosing of what goes forward with you and whether you leave the ground or not and there's a lot of fear that could be wrapped up in like i don't know if i want to take this journey because what if the hot air balloon pops and what if what if and this is this echoes or yeah. mirrors my roller skating journey right now like i don't know if i want to roller skate again because what if i fall and break my arm again and da, da 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 like there's fear that can prevent you from doing things but if you really mm -hmm. if they feel like you're supposed to do them and you, it's always like intuitively checking in with yourself i was talking with dukes about this the other day but as for like as far as like the roller skating example i'm not gonna know if i'm if it feels right until i'm putting the skate on my foot and once that skate goes on my foot i'm gonna know what the feeling gonna is right away i'm gonna know if i yeah. should do it or if i shouldn't do it and it's like always mm -hmm. intuitively checking in with yourself and mm -hmm. that gut feeling and listening to it so um but i do feel like a lot of the gut feelings are probably encouraging us to cut dead weight that we have been yes. holding on to for way too long and we are in a comfort zone about i think that that and and i think it's probably really hard for some of this dead weight to get cut because of emotional yeah. th things that you're tied up around like there's so so many mm -hmm. reasons i mean can't you know so many different reasons that you don't want to walk away from something that you know you should walk away from but you come up yeah. with all of these reasons and excuses, excuses. and you don't yeah. do it um, yeah. I think that's, and that's what why it this is a into. sword card. You have to yeah. lo logic your way through it. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. to be like, this is what's best for me, even though it feels like crap. You have to package uh, the emotions and set them aside and just be just for a little bit, be a cold hard forward. bitch for a second. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta be a little cold. And I Grief. think that's what's difficult mm -hmm. for me about so sword energy. And the Queen of Swords is like this too. She's cold, um, and I am not a cold person. But sometimes you have to make cold decisions, and that's what's Tough difficult love. for me. Yeah. 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 Cold, neutral, uh, all-knowing, wise decisions that sometimes are just disconnected from how you feel. Yeah. Because what, yeah. we, what we require and what we need usually doesn't feel great at first, is what I've learned. You got to kind of force your way through it. Mm -hmm. um, it can suck, like, really bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. It's very uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, yeah. And honestly, we're going to be getting into like so much of this with the astrology too. This is such right, a Saturnian excited. moment. It's going to be oh a good gosh, conversation. A segue? Well, I would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do we want to segue into the astrology, or do we want to do the Sturgeon Moon? I, I think the astrology. I feel like let's jump like into the astrology because it's going. It's naturally mm -hmm. pulling itself mm -hmm. that way. So I'm going to pull yeah. us over to the Dukesley. The Dukesley screen. Hello, everyone. Okay. We're here at the Dukesley screen. Are we here? Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, welcome back. So we're discussing the full moon in Aquarius today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Aquarian energy as well, because I think it's might be one of the most misunderstood signs. I think it gets um, not a bad rap. It, it, I think it, it's literally just an incorrect rap uh, that it receives oftentimes. And I'm here to set the record straight for all the any Aquarians here today. Uh, I, I want to say hello and I'm sorry for what I'm about to <laughs> throw at you uh because uh, aquarian risings you're gonna be going through it this full moon in particular 
uh, but also just Aquarian dominance, Saturn dominance. That's me. Uh, and anyone else who feels so, so drawn by uh, those those vibes. This one's for you. Uh, let's hang in there. So the full moon is happening on August 11th on, uh, in particular. That's a Thursday. Um, it's going to be exact at 9.36 p.m. EST, so nice late in the day. Uh, so that'll be nice. You can get to see the full moon in all of its glory if you're an EST. That's around 2.30 a.m. GMT the next day and uh, around 6.30 PST uh, for all you Californians. You guys are the only ones in PST. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> and uh, for the astro nerds out there, this is going to be at 19 degrees, 21 minutes, uh, which makes it the second decan. For a while now, we've been dealing with full moons in the third decans of their sign. This is the first one in a while. We're in the second decan, uh, which means that this full moon is going to be ruled by Mercury, uh, which is the six of swords. Uh, so that's why I popped off. It's very exciting to see that uh, uh, serendipity. Yeah, happening. the synchronicity. Uh, there we go. That's a better word. <laughs> um, so, and let's talk about Aquarius. What is Aquarius? What does it mean? Uh, I like I said. I think they are so misunderstood. Um, are they just on like a? Are they, <laughs> they would love to. First of all, they would love to hear me say that, that they're so misunderstood. Um, I, think are, the, I think we understand them perfectly. <laughs> they're the aliens of the zodiac. Actually, I'm going to be talking about how they're not the aliens uh, and and how they are just like so human. That they are... They're so human that they become alien. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's almost how that works. We, yeah, like, pretty every, much. Uh, so everyone else in the astrology signs would be masking their human nature a little bit and trying not to seem human. And, and Aquarians are just like... They don't even think about that. They, it's Here what I you am. see is what I get. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and so they're an air sign. A lot of people think that they're a water sign. Uh, that is not true. The water uh, They are the water bearer. They bear I call the water. Them, I call them the humidity sign. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that works. Uh, they're they're fixed and they're ruled by Saturn and Uranus, depending upon where you look. Um, so, and, and the other sign that's ruled by Saturn is Capricorn, which I think makes a lot of sense to people. Uh, I, I think it makes sense to see Capricorn energy and be like, yeah, that that feels like Saturn energy. That feels very foundational. They're very focused on uh, stability and and communal care and dependability. Then you hear Aquarius, and it's like, mm -hmm. huh? Uh, I, I don't understand because and and I think that a good way to look at this like Saturn dance between Capricorn and Aquarius is that Capricorns. They, how did I write this? Capricorns rule from inside the castle gates. They're the ones that are creating rules and regulations for everyone to live. And then the Aquarians are the ones who go outside the castle gates to search for better rules to bring back inside. Uh, and because Saturn rules structure, Saturn rules rules. Uh, of course, what better means to an Aquarian changes from person to person. What might be better to one person could be very harmful to many others. Um, and because, and, and I think that's just so important because with Aquarian energy, it's so, um, a word that we hear a lot is like humanitarian uh, is, is such an Aquarius thing. But I think it's less so... I, I just want to say I've never met an Aquarius in my life who gets excited to do volunteer work. So like I don't think that it's necessarily <laughs> Honestly, like like them going out into society in that way. They just represent I, the humans. I think for me and my experience Aquarius have been very intimate and personal to me. My mom is an Aquarius, my best friends have been Aquarius, dated for a long time Aquarius energy. I've been I'm very like deep in the Aquarius experience at this point. And I love, yeah. I truly love Aquarius. They're so funky and fun and like to to me they they lead. Like everyone calls like Aries the leader or whatever because they're the first. To me Aquarius 
start to do everything before everyone else follows suit. I feel like Aquarius start yeah. to like rumble in the like the new intuitive direction. Pisces, the revolutionary. Pisces starts to feel, and they're like, "Whoa, this feels and looks really cool. I'm gonna follow the Aquarius." And then Aries is like the first one to loudly do it, and they take credit for it. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. Um, but Aquarians are they're they're funky and they're fun. They're um, but as far as yeah. volunteer work, I feel like. They are, again, they naturally lead uh, by example. Um, that doesn't mean yeah. that they're going and volunteering in the trenches. It means that the no. things, they're going to be some of the first to like cry out when they see social injustice and right. they're going to embody it more. Um, and yes, then, because they stand for society. Yeah. And they, I mean, like cults are Aquarian in nature, right? It's this uh, pushing and encouraging of their belief system, of what they feel is best for everyone. That's the thing. They want what's best for everyone, mm. but what they think is best for everyone. So that's going to change from Aquarian to Aquarian. <laughs> um, I, I I put down, I actually don't know what his chart is. I actually should have looked this up to get a confirmation. But when I think of Aquarians, I think of like the Einsteins of the world, these deep big thinkers who challenge a lot of status quos and are uh, uh revolutionary in the way that they approach life and approach thinking right it's an air sign uh and they're they're analytical they're innovative they're erratic um but here's the thing i i hear so often oh like aquarians they're so zany they're so quirky no i don't think that's it they just don't give a fuck mm. that's the thing like and that's what makes them come off as these like woo like i'm so crazy like it's not that they're just literally in mm. their own lane and so they're doing I was their looking own thing up famous aquarians just for like some examples real quick and uh -huh. shady you'll be happy to know harry styles is an oh aquarius my God. Oh. mr styles okay. <laughs> okay, okay. But again, I think Harry Styles is a good pop culture example to look at because Harry Styles is very much like, and I know there's a lot of like debate or not, it's not even debate, but there, I know there's pushback on this talking point, but Harry Styles embodies a, a delicious androgyny um, and is a yeah. pop culture male icon and is like actively going out in makeup, painted nails, dresses. And there's plenty of other people throughout history. Prince is another one I can think of that really like did a whole, I wonder what's Prince's astrology sign. Um, but oh, it did a, a whole, question. like did a whole bunch for like mm. forwarding a, um, like the mixture of like, gender neutral, it's not even gender neutral, gender fluid expression. Fluid. Um, yeah, yes. exactly. was a Gemini. Of course he was. Um, Okay. Oh, yeah. I love that sense. <laughs> and Einstein was a Pisces, by the way. Wow. Okay. A little sensitive cool. baby. Mom loves um, But of course, we're just going off their sun signs. Yeah. You know, that's anything Harry, else. One piece. The Harry Styles example is interesting, though, because he's. Um, go like doing his own path and and a lot of what he his he wrapped up in the boy band right the the one direction boy band thing and the 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 cookie cutter kin mm -hmm. hot boy expression and then he's been slowly breaking out of those those boundaries that he's been put in um by pushing the limits of how he expresses yeah. and um and all of that very similar to the miley cyrus story of being stuck in a disney box and then breaking out and becoming a really vulgar yeah. opposite expression to reclaim her autonomy right that's yeah it, it, and feels, it feels similar to me that there but um i think that's what's cool though is aquarian's are also very sensitive. Oh my God. Maybe the most <laughs> sensitive sign um, <laughs> in my experience. Um, not true. Cancer's knocking on yeah, my door right now. Say, more than cancer. Now. But uh, I, yeah, I guess I don't even like can't. Anyway, um, <laughs> Aquarians are, they're, ex they're incredibly sensitive. And I think that's what makes them the the humanitarians too is that they're go they're, yeah. they have the bleeding hearts right they're going to feel for they, everything they bring people together yeah and so they care therefore they care uh i, I wrote down here i forget where i grabbed this quote but it, it says while to the average person an aquarian might look like it's spreading chaos and acting like a troublemaker to an aquarian it makes perfect sense they just want to build their utopia their way their rules uh and, and I think that's a pretty good summing up of Aquarian energy. But I also want to bring up that the opposite of Aquarius is Leo. We're in the Leo season right now. That's the Aquarian-Leo axis. Um, and 
I feel that the way that they're like sort of on opposite sides of the same coin is that Leo, they're both very expressive. These are two very ego driven signs. They want in two so different much directions. attention. It's ridiculous. So with Leo, <gasps> they discover themselves and express themselves through their soul and their inner fire and what really drives them. And I feel like Aquarians discover themselves through through observing the systems that rule them, analyzing what's around them, and and determining what does and doesn't fit. It's it's almost like the the actor versus the playwright, and it, it, where the the Leo kind of comes out and charms the crowd, while the Aquarian is the one that's sort of setting the stage, setting the the feelings and um, giving people Aquarius a place to wants attention show up without feeling like they asked for it. Leos mm-hmm. don't give a shit. They will scream for attention. They're like, whatever, yeah, yeah. I deserve it. And I know that I'm worth and Aquarians like to they they like to feel really special without asking to feel special because once they ask to feel special, it takes away their... It's not special anymore. Yeah, it's not special. I had to ask you to notice this. Yeah. Leos just want to be validated. Aquarians want to break the rules. Uh, And they both want to be known for those two things uh, uh, accordingly. Honestly, Uh, I'm listening to all this. I'm like, how do I not have any Aquarius in my chart? Because... (laughs) I, I feel... Uh, it's because we're all human and I think that's the cool thing about Aquarian is that they represent the human in and of themselves mm. because if you think about the water bearer everyone sees the jug how is the jug pouring out someone has to pour it out uh, and and so to me I, I think there we we can all see ourselves in Aquarians uh, and their energy because it's just so rooted in especially right now like in this time in human history when there's so much to get pissed about and so much to uh that that we're fighting for and so much that is going balls up we we are all seeing each other sort of band together and enter this this moment uh (laughs) together as humans uh but now we're going to talk about the full moon in particular um this is a lot this is once again Aquarian Risings, shout out to you. This is going to be a tough one. Uh, and just anyone who is feeling, who, who has large Aquarius influence in their life, um, it, it's it's going to be a lot. Um, this one's for you. Uh, so the first thing I like to look at is the sign or the planet that rules Aquarius is Saturn. I want to see where Saturn's at. And actually Saturn is making a T square currently with the sun and moon. Uh, we've talked about T squares before. Uh, not fun squares. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of, uh, uh, uh built up stuck energy. That's really hard to get out. Um, and is, we've actually talked about Saturn, is Saturn last time. Not over here in Aquarius too. Um, Saturn. What? Isn't it? Isn't that? Oh yeah, it isn't is. Isn't it conjunct to the moon? Oh uh, yeah, no, you're right. Okay, wait. It's a. Di- oh, I wrote my notes wrong. I'm sorry. The Saturn, Saturn's in a T squared to something. I apologize. I, let me see real quick. Uh, it looks <laughs> like, like probably a second. Like you're right to this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mars. That's Mars okay. Oh sun. yeah, I see where. Oh, I I wrote moon instead of Mars. Okay, so yeah, it, it's in a it's in a T square with with Mars, which is just ugh, ugh, ugh. that's so that's so uncomfortable. Um, and it's however I want to say that also Saturn's in retrograde. However, we're halfway through. We're halfway through the Saturn retrograde, which is really nice. Uh, Whew. I, I remember when Saturn first turned retrograde, I was like, no, I actually think this is good for Saturn. I lied. This is horrible. <laughs> this feels like shit. I am not happy. I cannot wait until Saturn turns turns direct again. Uh, it, it's That's not for a while. <laughs> I know. It, it's a few more months, but we're halfway there. So we're, we're hitting, and a word that I keep coming to for this moment is climax. We're hitting a big climax moment um, that I think a lot of us have been building towards. Um, but here's the thing. Like, with Saturn just like bumping heads with Mars right now, we there's just no stability here. All right, it's retrograde, uh, and and there's expect the unexpected, expect to be disrupted. The, everything external right now is in shambles. Okay, do not expect anything to turn out the way that you think it's going to, especially in this external earthly realm. Okay. Uh, we, we, we need to rely right now on our inner guidance, our inner light, 
the the sun in Leo is actually such a really it feels so good right now to have this sun in Leo. We're actually going to be talking quite quite a bit about Leo energy um, because Venus is also entering Leo on the full moon, so that's really good. Uh, I I'm sick of this Cancer in Venus nonsense that's been happening. As someone with it, Natalie, it's been really drowning us. And I think that when Venus enters Leo, it's going to be a breath of fresh air uh, for us connecting with ourselves, connecting with our peace and our uh, 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 self-love, especially. Um, Another good uh, aspect that's happening is that the moon's going to be sextile Jupiter and Aries. Uh, that's awesome. We, we love to see that sex styles are just so playful. And I think that this is going to be a really great moon for like, just hanging out with your friends. Uh, and, and just like, especially if you're feeling like shit right now, like most of us are, this is a great time to call up a buddy and be like, we need to hang out. Yo, let's buy We need to hang out. Will you watch me play Sudoku for an hour? (laughs) <laughs> Literally. I'm, actually, I'm actually um thursday i'm going i'm meeting up with a friend to do like a big spell together and we're going to the beach and bring getting i'm getting a nice bottle of wine like a nice bottle of wine and we're just gonna like drink on the beach and do do some witchcraft maybe dance around a fire i'm so excited yes that, that sounds perfect that sounds like a perfect remediation to this nonsense right like it it, and i also think that like jupiter and aries kind of brings a big light onto a lot of things uh i'm thinking about any world of warcraft fans it's like uh what are you hiding uh like we're having a little uh nightborn moment uh an illusion what are you hiding Uh, and and i think that we're there's going to be a big illuminating moment of of just finally getting some clarity. But I think that really the only way that we can lean into that is just like not relying upon anything external right now. Everything's falling apart because we're also having a square Uranus moment in Taurus. Uh, it's bad. It's bad out here. It, 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 there's going to be disruptions. There's a lot of power plays, especially with, with Mars right now. Mars and Uranus have been doing this strange little dance for a while where they're conjunct and then they're not conjunct. And then they're... Uh, it, it, it's... There's... And if we want to look at this on a really big scale, we're looking at revolutions in countries and and, and uh, on big, big scales, but also in little, in, in our own personal worlds, we have to be really careful with uh, giving too much power to that which restricts us. We don't want to be restricted right now, but there's a lot of restrictive energy, despite our foundations crumbling, despite... Uh, uh, these these influences. Do you think these are play. self-imposed restrictions or external restrictions? Definitely, self-imposed. I think it's both. Okay. Actually, uh, I I think that ultimately, when yeah, I would say both. I would say both That's because like me saying it's like just... a broken arm, like I can let that dictate. That's out of my control a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean it's fully out of my control. I can't control yeah. the bone is broken, so it is a restriction on me, and I can either let that restriction. Um, prevent me from doing things or from trying even or from continuing to push forward um even just as far as like my regular content creation or of course i need like a healing moment so it's like listen to the restriction in the ways that are going to help you but don't let it prevent you from uh doing it like doing anything at all or giving up on something giving up on on anything really yeah i i i sit with that i think that's a very good way to view what's happening because it's uh yeah there's just like a lot of power at play right now and i think that we can either let it control us or we can let it or we we can release and disrupt the power even kind of break that cycle um we we kind of have to power back (laughs) at it um but also as i said venus entering leo we i really think we need this because especially i think the reason why this venus and cancer moment was so rough was that there was a lot of plutonian influence uh with this with this uh aspect in this transit and i think that makes us feel really out of touch with ourselves especially when venus and cancer is supposed to be such this heartfelt time i think that a lot of us felt very disconnected um and now when venus is going to be entering leo there's we were talking about ego 
And I think that's actually going to empower us right now. I think a lot of us are afraid of feeling ego, but I think a lot of us should be affirming right now. I think a lot of us should be uh, uh, expressing ourselves um, and sort of roar, right? Loud and proud, I think is, is like a really good remediation to all of these power struggles at play. It's just sort of like a, a okay, you could do that, but I I show up and I will be me and be awesome and and be light and love and whatever, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, however, because of all the Saturnian, Uranian influence, uh, heartfelt connections with others might not be easy um, because of all these power things at play. So that's why I, I'm feeling such a pull to go inward, go with the ones you already love, the ones that already feel good that you don't have to worry about like power struggles with. Uh, that, that's why I brought up friendships earlier, friendships that feel good, that feel light, that feels nice, that's good. This is not a time though, I think, um, to expect people, others to like come to realizations about themselves and like like heal uh, uh, darker feelings that are like at play between each other. Um, I would expect deep conversations, uh, especially if you do want to remediate, but it, it's... I have zero interest in meeting new people right now. I, and I would say that's so. A, that's a lot coming from a triple Gemini, like, and a Sagittarius <laughs> moon. I always want to see and hear and feel new things and talk to everybody. And right now I have, like, it's, there, there's part of me that's like, I, it feels I don't want anything influencing me right now until I figure my shit out. Like that's what it, it feels like a deeply introverted moment. Um, and that's Aquarius energy too, introversion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think that a little bit of that introversion plus a little bit because like, I don't know, like Venus and Leo is just like the Empress, like just unapologetic self-love, self-exploration, self-appreciation. I think it's so important to remediate with that. But I, I and I have some thoughts uh, that I want to share just separate of all this. If you guys want some astrology homework, please check out where Aquarius is in your chart uh, and just sort of uh, uh, look it over. What what house is it in? What does that mean to you? Um, and I think that we're approaching almost like a, a, a two-year cycle with, with Saturn at this point. So kind of reflect over the last two years and think about how all this Aquarius energy is kind of building up right now. I know I have Aquarius in my 12th house and uh, this has been a lot of, a lot of the, the problems I've been having this year have been because people haven't been telling me that there are problems. <laughs> and the 12th house is the house of secrets, is the house of the subconscious, is the mm -hmm. house of keeping things to themselves. It's a lot of people suddenly being like, actually, I've had a problem with this about you for years. It's like, huh? why didn't you tell me? Uh, I could have been working on this the whole time. You know, I could have been doing something about this. Uh, and, and it feels like uh, all within like the same week, a whole bunch of people approached me and said, like, I got I got beef and I'm like, wow, I, <laughs> well, I, I don't know vegan. what to say. I can't deal with this. Yeah, this, this, this is out of my, <laughs> it's out of my that, moral range. Apologies. Is that like a line from a song? It's totally a line from a oh, song. It is. Oh, a 303 song. I thought I was just being clever, damn it. And yeah. your boyfriend <laughs> says he's got me. Yeah. I'm a vegetarian, I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not fucking scared of him. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so it's actually interesting because I have Aquarius in my fourth house, but it's not actually like my houses go from, um, no, yeah, from Capricorn is the ruler of my fourth house and Pisces is the ruler of my fifth house. So Aquarius is in my fourth house but like it's not the prominent placement i'm just mm -hmm. like when i say i have no aquarius in my chart i'm like i have no my aquarius only in my aquarius chart. is my 10th house and that's okay. it yeah. so that the house of <laughs> outward facing career uh and uh the way you present yourself mm -hmm. on like a professional level that's the 10th house mm -hmm. uh <laughs> so and i feel like you've been confronting how you sell yourself mm -hmm. to the world mm -hmm. uh so i think that's relevant and the fourth house deals with the roots where you live the what, house of the home how you're mm -hmm. how you feel safe mm -hmm. uh family ancestry all that stuff mm -hmm. um 
A- another question I have is, is what is controlling you? What, how, how are you feeling sort of shackled to things right now? And money. And, and money. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, that's same. a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and that and that's on that's on inflation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's on the world falling apart, which is also relevant, right? <laughs> Astrology looks at everything and we can't it's deny that interesting. things are Me falling and apart everywhere. Pretty similar birth charts, generally speaking. Um yeah. with like the big threes and stuff. So my Aquarius is mm-hmm. an empty twelfth house. Um Me too. but uh the secrets thing that you're dealing with where it's like people have had these thoughts for a while i feel like i was on the opposite end of you i was holding on to feelings for a long time and Mm. then acted upon for a lot of different things in my life it's like okay actually i don't think i've ever liked this and gotta change (laughs) yeah i'm done pretending that i'm done i'm done like sucking it up and and hoping that i will my feelings will change over time and this will be okay Mm -hmm. and it's actually not okay um and now i need to address this and this this hit several different areas of my life um Mm -hmm. And that was where the difficult of severing the sandbags came in (laughs) the difficulty of that for sure. And especially because even on another level of just being a woman, like we are expected to have like a lot of things roll off our back mm. and just like go with the flow and be gracious and be accommodating. And now it's like, you know, I got I got pro- I got problems with some of the shit that the way people work and the way and the who's in my life and and now i gotta advocate Mm. (laughs) for for what i want and advocate for uh my my desires right uh i i i feel that too that that might have just been me but like i i i'm definitely in an advocation phase uh where it's just like i can't just sit here and continue to let my subconscious scream at me (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> to change things i gotta start making moves um and and it's just like how can how can we release and disrupt these thoughts and ideals that are controlling our existence you know i think that's such a astrological big question but i think that the best way to sort of move through this full moon is just like we gotta root into our light we gotta root into our soul and because that's going to be our compass, it always is forever, right? Uh, that's never not going to be our compass. But especially right now, when our foundations are crumbling, when Saturn is screaming and crying, and Uranus and Mars are angry, and the Moon is in Aquarius, <laughs> and uh, it's I don't know, we got to push back by rooting together with our loved ones besties night i feel like this right? could be a Playing moment games. where like our like we, there might be an argumentative nature and maybe this is yeah. why the introversion is encouraged because it's when you're comfortable with people the boundaries are understood and like yeah. and when you're meeting new people you might be rubbed the wrong way more mm-hmm. easily than another moment um mm-hmm. especially yeah. like chiron is drawing my eye to again chiron True. chiron's been getting my attention this is a second birth chart or not birth chart but transit chart we've looked at last month too i was like chiron is <laughs> like yeah. like so i feel i feel like there's that makes me feel like there are wounds that are difficult for us for the last couple of months that are causing a lot of challenges and maybe and well Ch- chiron's trying the sun so i think that that can work in tandem right where our our soul kind of helps unlock some hurt mm. you know and feeling really guided by our our uh fire our inner fire fire's been such a theme right now too yeah. uh especially with all this leo movement that's happening and uh what it feels like I, to go with the fire metaphor then and to, to echo back to the like intuitive thing that I was doing at the yeah. start, like it feels like the fire is running, burning low right now. And there's 
where maybe there's limited fuel. So we want to hold the fuel and mm -hmm. we want to let the fire burn low for as long as possible before we try to rebuild it. And so like it's we're le we're letting the fire burn low and going to find new resources to put into it is what is what it feels yeah. like to me. This is a like that purgatory in between. Um, it's it's difficult. Maybe the fire like I'm thinking of Calcifer from uh, yeah. from Howl's Moving Castle when Sophie is like intentionally starving him and he's like, yes. Sophie, please, you have to give me another wall. And she's like, whatever, you're going to be fine. I feel very much like Sophie and Calcifer in that moment right now where I'm, <laughs> maybe there, maybe it could go too far and you could neglect your need for that fuel for too long that it's going to put that fire mm -hmm. out permanently. Um, but there, there, we can stretch it just a little bit further. And um, the question is, is where does that balance fall for you? Is it too late already? Yeah. Are you approaching that point? Can you hold off? You, Sophie didn't want to stop her momentum. And when she had to stop her momentum and put the attention on Calcifer, it would stop the flow that she was doing. So yeah. that was why she was pushing it as long. And also she was being a bit of an asshole. But, <laughs> <laughs> but also like, Go going, going on like that low fire thing, it just like you said that and it just brought me back to earlier you hate made the point of you feel like the frog in the slowly boiling pot of yeah. water so like it's one of those like you need to be mindful of both things because like the um like the fire is low but doesn't mean that it can't still have an effect yeah. in a negative way yeah and it's I true. think it's interesting too with Aquarius being an air element right and then Leo being so fire like too much air can can snuff out a flame right but also mm -hmm. too little mm -hmm. so it's like even when you're starting like a small fire you you blow air onto it right to to stoke the mm -hmm. flame and to get mm -hmm. the embers going but too much can can snuff it out entirely so it's that that delicate balance of yeah of everything and just to wrap up i i wrote down a couple of mantras that i think would be helpful to carry with us in these moments, which is, uh, it is safe to be myself. That's one. It is and safe to be myself. I release all judgments towards myself. I release all judgments to myself. Oh, are we not supposed to say them? <laughs> you can <laughs> say <kidding>. them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and external and internal judgments, right? It's uh, because... Uh, the like I said, lots of power plays happening here internally, externally. It, it's it is safe to be ourselves. It is encouraged to be ourselves, and um, also really good time to break addictions. Uh, the foundations are crumbling as it is, so uh, you might as well just release everything oh that doesn't God, serve me you. Me trying to break my uh, soda addiction. Let's go. <laughs> literally, like this is a really good time, that, like astrologically, to lean into any addiction breaking moments we need to do. Uh, it's important. Um, and you... additionally, real quick, uh, Mars enters Gemini on the twentieth. That's cool. Uh, that's gonna be a nice shift. Uh, Virgo season starts on the twenty second. Shout out to Virgos everywhere. Um, Y'all really know how to write down everything and <laughs> I love Virgos <laughs> the organization oh, I, wish. I, I appreciate you all for Virgos being to me okay I'm sorry librarians. they're like Aquarius Excuse except me. they're not seeking the validation <laughs> Like they, they also mm -hmm. just air they things. stay in their little corners and they do their weird little experiments and like like expressions and they don't go seeking attention for it. They they, yeah, like they just to do it for themselves. They like to receive the validation, but they're not they're not it, deeply hoping for it. Um, where Aquarius Gemini's collect and then the Virgos do with the collections mm, that we make. Mm. Virgos are like little scientists to me. They are. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. So. Virgos, you rule. Love you guys. I also just want to say, I was looking at like some upcoming astrology. The week of nine, uh, wow, that's not, what am I saying? August 29th looks really peaceful. Uh, so if you guys cool. are looking for a break, if you guys are looking for just like a nice week of a breather, it looks like, yeah, August 29th looks like a really good time to just like take a vacation and just chill out for a little bit. That's actually, uh, that's the week I get to meet my favorite author of all time who I ooh. have wanted to meet for like 20 years. That is that week. Mm -hmm. so. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that, that looks super harmonious for that. So I, I just thought I'd let you guys know about that. It looks really comfy and cozy there. I just, I just wanted to wrap up with just like a quick recap of what I just 
rambled about for a while. Um, it's just Saturn, Uranus, Mars. These are all really tough planets to sit with and to carry with us. And I think that this is not the time to rely on externals. This is not the time to rely on, um, I don't know, people and ex uh, uh, things that are not ourselves and not soul driven to influence what we want to do and what we should be doing. Uh, should's a strong word, but like it, it, this is a time to surround ourselves with loved ones. This is a time to go inward and really cradle ourselves and really love ourselves and really realign with what is taking us away from ourselves and away from our soul goals, our big, big, beautiful uh, goals that light us up and make us smile and make us want to dance in the rain naked. And uh, it's, it's just time to, we're being asked to just let our soul roar loud, roar free, and uh, non-compromised by the bullshit right uh, this is good advice overall but like especially right now because i think that on a practical level we can expect um a lot of things like layoffs just like things that you thought were totally comfortable in your life and then all of a sudden a a stability factor that you had is just gone or like your car breaks down you know, uh, this is not the time to rely upon like those those things. We we have to feel very guided here, and I think that instead of running our head against a wall and being like, uh, uh, I don't know, like even wallowing is just not productive. You know, you just wrecked your car. That sucks. Uh, <laughs> but it, <it's>, thematic, <laughs> yes, uh, very fitting. Uh, Really sit in love, really sit in uh, the the your soul space and realign with 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 all of that, because there's a lot of power struggles at play. There's a lot of control at play, both internal and external. And just free yourself just for a little bit. And I think you're going to feel a lot lighter. And if you can try to carry that energy for as much as you can, um. I think that will guide you more so than you, uh, I don't know, like, for example, because eye candy is just really getting fucked up right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and so so is Ali T. Like, the, these two people in chat, they're just getting owned right now, <laughs> according to all this. And I, I would just say, like, instead of just running out and like, oh, I'm in a panic, I gotta get another job. Just sit with yourself just for a little bit. See what the soul directs you to, because things are just going to continue falling down. And it could be it could be a good moment to redirect your attention, or like yeah. like I was talking about the earlier part of the podcast. The plane is getting close to landing, and you can still change course a little bit, yeah. and it could put you in an entirely different state. Um, so yeah. just do, should you redirect, or are we on the right path? Is this the right state we want to land in, or should we we correct a little bit now? Should we angle off? Are we trying to just crash in the ocean? because we're done with it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, true. <laughs> Sounds like it might also be like a good time to invest in some safety nets, right? Uh, yeah. Make sure that that your eggs aren't all in one basket, right? Um, yeah. Even if you are, like, I thought my job was super secure before the pandemic and then it does, that company doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's like one of those things you never know when stuff's going to happen. So yeah. having, making sure that you're putting that money in your savings account, that maybe you have just a couple other opportunities that you might be interested in um, on the yeah. back burner, right? And things like that. So just, you know, yeah. take care of yourself. No, nothing is secure right now. If you're a streamer, don't re rely entirely on Twitch income. No, Diversify especially not with inflation. Your income. <laughs> I mean, just don't do that in general. But <laughs> and just remember, it is safe to be yourself. It is safe to release all judgments towards yourself. Those I think are yeah thoughts and words. We to don't carry. need the inner critic right now. 
We no, need the inner. No, no, no. We need to give ourselves. We have enough parts. outer critic. What Twitch at the income? Okay, eye candy being <laughs> too real. Um, <laughs> um, all right, that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. All right. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, everybody. Um, <gasps> yeah. So I think we're gonna be jumping over here into Panthera segment, sex segment yeah. section. Se- oh, sex se- segment. Well, um, well. yes. Are we ready, Panthera? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be, okay. I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm nervous. All right. So <laughs> my section is talking about the Sturgeon Moon. So each month has a traditional full moon name that kind of goes along with it. Uh, traditionally, various cultures all over the globe used to use the moon as kind of their calendar. So they would often refer to months as periods of, of the surgeon moon or the thunder moon etc cetera, etc cetera, um, until we have the calendar that we that we know today but so i do have this all in a handy little blog post so if you'd like to check it out you don't have to worry about taking notes or anything it's all there for you so the sturgeon moon the sturgeon moon gets its name from the algonquin peoples and it comes from the abundance of sturgeon fish during the great lakes at this time for those of you who don't know i actually am 10 minutes away from the great lakes i go there a lot and it's a huge part of like living up here but so i wanted to ask our our cast here do you guys know what sturgeon are (laughs) unfortunately yes what is this jump scare? Hello? Dukes doesn't like fish. <laughs> uh, oh, right. Uh, right, right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There is a giant. I know Hook. surgeons from Stardew Valley because surgeon is part of the community bundle. Mm-hmm. I know surgeons from Animal Crossing. <laughs> <Look>. Gamers <laughs> out here. We're true gamers. <laughs> don't say you don't learn anything from video games because here we are. I know they're huge and they're, they're really, huge. really they blue. Pretty big. Yeah, so color can vary. Most of the ones that I've seen are, are like a grayish, grayish okay, blue. I'm judging, um, I'm judging this on video games, my bad. <laughs> one thing that does it, there are 27 different species of sturgeon, so no worries there. There the? is a lot That's of too them. Many. So That's 27 too sturgeons many. Sturgeons are, are big, and they're very Jurassic looking. They're very, yeah. um, like... They're, they're bony fishes, so they kind of have body shapes almost similar to sharks, and they're mostly known for these bony plates that kind of go down their back like ridges. So almost like, have, if you guys know dinosaurs, oh. like an ankylosaurus has like the bony plates, and you know how along its side, it's got like the little spikes? It has those yeah. along its sides. Aren't, so they're they're very bony fishes. Aren't, um, aren't sturgeons like one of like the ancient fish like coelacanths? They've been around for a long time. Yeah. since the early Jurassic period. Yeah, so so yeah. it has been a, a long time. Now, they have evolved over time, which does set them apart from, like, the coelacanths, which are also really cool fish. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an... I I'm love just gonna let all my fish, like, nerdery. Yeah. I want to hear, yeah. <laughs> so, um... Fun fact, real quick. I am going to rant for a second because in college, I took my ichthyology course, which is the study of fish, at the same time as my ornithology class, which is the study of birds. And if you don't know, birds and fish share the same format for their order names. So if you know, like animals are separated by kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So that's how like the scientific names for animals and their classifications. Well, (laughs) sturgeons, and then both of my classes had quizzes on the order. So we used to have to go through all the different families of fish and then the different birds and memorize them and be able to match like, okay, parrots are this one, ducks are this one, clownfish are this one, seahorses are that one, sharks are this one. And why these two teachers decided to do this like within the same two weeks of each other, I have no clue and I will hate them to this day for doing that. So sturgeon and eagles have like almost the same exact order name. Sturgeons are Asipenseriformes, and then eagles are Asipateriformes, and I would get them mixed up and fail that quiz. The word terra is in there. Asipentera. 
That it's not. Yeah, is that the, so both of them are A C C I and then P and then it switches. So there's like only oh, a couple pterodactyl. letters that are different. Acipateriformes or Acipenseriformes. I see. So and when you're going down the list of thirty of these that you need to remember. <laughs> Oh, the bane of my existence. <laughs> but so that's there my little so much biology trauma. rant. I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> I was like, why? Like, uh, one of you guys could have done it at the beginning of the semester, the other one could have done it at the end. Why did these have to be at the same time? It doesn't make sense. Okay. <laughs> so, if anybody needs to know the uh, the order <laughs> for the family of sturgeons, a sip and Sarah for me. So there you go. <laughs> that's what we that's what we sign up on the Celestial Cafe podcast yeah. to learn the scientific <laughs> order of fishes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I, very rarely do I get one that goes along with an animal. So you know, when we get it, I just gotta run with it. <laughs> But so the abundance of sturgeon during the Great Lakes in this time of year, um, obviously that impacted a lot of the the native peoples to this area. And that is why this time of year is called the sturgeon moon. So now for magical workings. We're in August, right? Harvest season's in full swing. We just had our first of the harvest festivals for our Sabbaths. Um, Munasa or Lamas. So everyone is starting to reap the rewards. I learned that it's actually pronounced Lunasa. 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 Oh, okay. The, the I've, emphasis I've, is on the third. I've always heard it so. Lunasa, mm-hmm. like Lunasa. I've always heard it Lunasa. Yeah. 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 T- tomato, tomato. How you know, to honestly. <laughs> yeah. It looks weird as Sometimes hell. So any guesses, too. any any pronunciation <laughs> that's not Lunasad <laughs> is probably okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> Champagne. We're just gonna call it Lugi going forth. It's spelled L U G H N A S A D H. Harvest Lugi. <laughs> so it's spelled that so disgusting. It's, it's such a strange spelling. It looks like an Irish word. I don't know. Yeah. Like, Most of them are Irish Gaelic. Yeah. Uh, they're Celtic. Scottish Gaelic. Yeah. yeah, they're they're from a, a variety. And a lot of times too, there's like slightly different cultural variations too, depending on which area is talking about their version of the Sabbath. Anyway, I derailed that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so why all right, let's pull us back. Why is this the Sturgeon Moon? Because they they're very popular so this is like their spawning season essentially in the Great Lakes during this time. Oh my god. So someone dropped a bunch for, of spawn eggs. If I were to go fishing right now in the Great Lakes, the chances of me catching a sturgeon would be much higher than the rest of the year, essentially. Not this is the time oatmeal. where it's like, stock up. Oatmeal light in the chat, like, it's Levy Osa, not Levy Osa. <laughs> I was going to make a comment like Hermione would love this conversation. <laughs> Except it is. You've got to put the emphasis on the right syllable. <laughs> <laughs> So it's because the fishes are, are they're spawning, they're, plentiful. they're very active. So sturgeons are like a, a cold water fish because they're so bony. So they tend to be lower the rest of the year. And then they, they kind of come up to the top too during this time. I hate the fact that they're bony fishes. <laughs> they're like, actually oh. really weird looking. they're cool um, looking. They, I like They them. look like little dinosaur fish, but they also look yeah. like eels. They're not what I thought they were going to look like at all. Oh my god. They're, they're oh, cylindrical wow. fishes. eels are cute. <laughs> they look like a shark. Their body is very similar to a shark. They're they're very yeah. long. They're kind of flattened. Like they're not like a like a tropical fish which is very like extended vertically. Yeah. Um, they do. They, they, like, they, they have lateral like, lines too they look that like sharks a fresh have. Water shark, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With like a bony spine. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm happy for you guys. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. It sounds awesome for you guys. Just Dukes awesome. is just not having a good time right now. <laughs> Dukes did not sign up for a fish podcast. <laughs> no. We need like a horror uh, podcast. We need to have like an episode where me and Dukes like go to an aquarium together. I was gonna say <laughs> oh I would pay God. money I to watch the whole thing. If Dukes Lee, if you could overcome your like deep fear, I would pay money to watch you react to different pictures of different species of fish and try to guess what they're called. I would pay oh money my God. for that. <laughs> Holy moly. One time so real quick, I, I this will be like two seconds. One time my friends tricked me to took me to an aquarium. Oh, uh, no. It was horrendous. I cried my eyes out. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. They put, they put a blindfold on me and they were like, 
we're gonna take you somewhere cool i was like okay yeah i trust my friends uh because i love them and they love me uh, and they took off the blindfold and it was just like a bunch of clownfish and i just like fell to the floor <laughs> weeping it was pathetic oh, clownfish are so it was a cute though oh my gosh oh man oh. they did and that was their defense they were like oh we tried to take you to the safest fish i was like no fish is safe there's no oh, fish safe fish what about like a seahorse uh, are seahorses I love, triggered here's the thing it's fish i don't like fish i love seahorses well seahorses are a type of fish but i've well, seen you they don't I've look seen like you some a fish. bugs before and I, I think what i've what i've it's the eyes yeah we've, we've yeah. gotten it down to yeah. these beady little lifeless eyes because I've sent you <laughs> pictures of my frogs before and you love frogs but my aquatic yeah, frogs, frogs cool. I sent too much too <laughs> close too much of a close up on their face and they've got the little dead oh. fish eyes because they're aquatic <laughs> frogs they're what not about, so do eyeless fish bother you what do you mean eyeless <laughs> fish <laughs> fish like the without ones that eyes are like bottom dwellers yeah <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> no that sounds horrible okay. too Confirm, it's not just eyes though <laughs> oh wow Wow, there's oh this wow, there are some eyeless fish. My Fitbit loves this. You're in the zone. Oh, it's so funny because like, so I went to college. I like so my first year in college at least was at Coastal Carolina University at Myrtle Beach. For anybody who knows, and on weekends I would just go to Ripley's Aquarium and I just spend the hours there petting the sharks because they have like these bamboo sharks and like the touch tanks. And I would just pet them and befriend them, and that was all sharks I did. Are, I had sharks no are friends. okay. Sharks are. Fine. Mm-hmm. I love they sharks. They got so cool. eyes. You want to talk about eyes? Shark eyes are, uh, yeah. are, are beady little demonic buttons. Okay, I, I hate sharks now. I don't know. <laughs> 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 don't worry. I, I, I figure the, I'll take sharks, but man. All right, continue. The, I apologize. The aquarium is like my favorite, my favorite place to go when I have scare. like constant high level stress. Like I go to the aquarium. Yeah, I love, I love having my, my aquarium in my room. It's, it, I mean, it's oh, stressful yeah. to maintain. Yeah. I feel like a failure trying to maintain it, but it is um, very relaxing and, you know. I like the butterfly room. Okay, that's a good room. Mm-hmm. I would be terrified of the butterfly room, though, because not because of the butterfly. I love, I love bugs. I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt yes, them. Yes, I would be so scared I was yeah. gonna hurt one of them. I just stood still. Yeah, and I had someone like kind of guide me out because I was afraid of like stepping on them. And they're so fragile and cute. I'm actually uh, not that afraid of sharks as far as their like their teeth. I think they would accidentally hurt me more than they would intentionally hurt right. me. Would you? Would you guys go into a shark cage? Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I, like. I don't think like I, I I don't know I've been watching a lot lately because like hippos have been getting like oh such a cute hippo there's been this meme no, going, hippos there's been this meme going mean. around of a baby hippo that's like nomming someone a human's oh. arm and it's very oh. it's very cute looking because it's a baby but hippos at least in the country that they're in are they like kill more the people number one than cause of death. sharks like it's, alligators and like big cats and combined. so it's like and the other thing I've been seeing a lot of comparison of is like a, a, a shark they're so territorial um, compared to a dolphin like everyone thinks sharks are demonic freaks right. but dolphins are the freaks okay dolphins like, are <laughs> freaks <laughs> and the, oh my gosh shady you're watching the boys right now i know oh yeah God. if y'all have seen the boys on amazon prime <laughs> the, you, uh, if you know you, you know you know what we're talking about they're, they're freaks <laughs> they're little freaks they're freaks oh, yeah, they are. oh okay one so, of the only animals that have so sex for pleasure completely derailed at this I know, point it's so fun though <laughs> this, is a, this has been a great tangent um, <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, Panthera, do you have anything else about the Sturgeon Moon, or you want to move into the tarot spread? I, I have co- quite a bit still. Oh, so all right. We have barely. We just, we went, over, the name. We just went over what surgeons are and yeah. then just ran with it. So, <laughs> damn, all right. <laughs> magical workings for the Sturgeon Moon. So, harvest season is in full sling. Like we said, everyone is reaping all these rewards of all this hard work that you've been putting in, right? You planted those seeds, you've tended your land. Now it's like time to finally start harvest. And if you have a real garden too right now, you know I found the biggest zucchini ever. It was not there last week, and now it's like this big. And it's like, where did you come from? But tomatoes everywhere, peppers everywhere. It's just like a great time. 
So it's cool. an awesome time to work Honors. with abundance, prosperity, kitchen magic, especially if you're doing your own gardening or have your own mm -hmm. herbs or if you can get locally like a farmer's markets and things like that. This is the great time to work with what is growing in your area right now. It's also a good time to practice uh, generosity magic and just kind of perseverance and adaptability, right? As we begin to prepare our harvests for storage for the long season ahead, right? Right. So it's kind of like the buckle up time. We're, we're getting all of the last little pieces together and packed away. So that way, when winter comes, we can rest and we can relax and, and we're taking care of. Certainly, because it's like you've mm -hmm. already worked really hard on, on planting the seeds, tending the seeds, and now it's almost harvest time, but you got to push through a little bit longer. Some of the stuff is starting to harvest, but the big harvest hasn't hit yet. Um, right. Yeah. And so for the correspondences, I'm just going to touch on a couple of these. So colors are very like, think of summer tones, right? And we're getting into those harvest tones. So all of your yellows, oranges, reds, golds, greens, uh, like deep greens. This is like rich. So mm. we're, we've got these like rich, emeralds. vibrant colors. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then for crystals, we have our tiger's eye, carnelian, Ooh. garnet, lots of fire and earth. So and which corresponds so perfectly with Leo season and everything else yes. that's going on right now. We see that kind of similar theme continue with the deities that correspond with the season. So Vulcan, Mars, uh, Nemesis, Mars. Hecate, Hathor, Thor. We have a lot of, particularly like Vulcan or um, Hephaestus, I believe, is the same counterpart. Um, yeah. Lots of like deities of craftsmen, right? Lots of building yeah. and putting in the hard work right now. Um, lots of like forward moving energy during this time. This is a time for action. This is a time for getting shit done. This is not a time for, for sitting back and reflecting in more like calm deities during this time. Uh, you're not going to see like we have Hecate there, but not a lot of like death deities and stuff. Their, their time's coming up here soon. So herbs Yay. pretty much what's what's active during this time right great time to work with sunflowers chamomile rosemary basil poppies um it's a great time to work with like the fresh produce that's coming in from your garden even things like zucchinis can be used magically so just do yeah. your research or come up with your own correspondences right for those individual things and of course the element here is fire which i think is so interesting with it being like the sturgeon moon and once again we've got the full moon in aquarius and then we have Sun and Leo. So we've got like this kind of balance between water and fire during this time, which is so interesting. But yeah, what do you guys think? Like, do you find that the correspondences kind of backed up with what we were expecting or anything outside what you were? Sounds about right to me. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have thought Sturgeon Moon, but that's because I don't live near. I'm sure there might be a sturgeon in a lake around here or something, but I don't know shit about <laughs> fish is really what I, it boils down to. I did to. not know that they're, they're like a Great Lakes fish. Like, I mean, I live right on Lake Michigan yeah. and I did not know. I know nothing about Midwest anything. <laughs> I've only lived here since 2014. You know, it hasn't been that long. Um, I don't need to know anything about Midwest. <laughs> Willful ignorance. You say, nay, I don't care about this. I like, uh, um, well, I have Tiger's Eye on today. I love Tiger's my, Eye. It's my favorite. Tiger's Eye is a go-to I just wrote a blog post about Tiger's me. Eye. Just a <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have a garnet here. Uh, I want to eat it. It looks like a Tootsie Roll. Oh, uh, yum. And I think that it's interesting um, that this is like such a go, go, go time uh, witchery-wise. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, like astrologically at least for like this cycle of this sturgeon moon like astrologically i feel like we're being pulled so much to just like not, it's not even like stop or like pause it's just like it doesn't matter what you do because it's all gonna fall apart anyway mm. <laughs> so well, it's see, like I looked at it as like you know the we mentioned like the restrictions like feeling yeah. restricted by what is available to us and when i think about like working seasonally and like the patterns that um, especially, especially our ancestors, right, who were more reliant on farms and traditional uh, agriculture and working with the seasons, they didn't have the 
the period of rest at during this time. They were, they were not allowed yeah. that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? That privilege. Like they were. Yeah. They that was not available to them. It was you have to bring this stuff in or it's going to rot outside. Yeah. Like a, yeah. you can, you can preserve it and put in the work now. So that way then you can rest when it's time or you can not and have to deal with those consequences. So it was kind of like, what are you going to choose? Both are hard, right? It's hard mm-hmm. to, to not to go hungry and it's hard to put in the work now, but which one are you going to do? Because you got to do one. Yeah, for sure. But so next we have our tarot spread for the Sturgeon Moon. If you want to put that graphic up for me, gotcha. <laughs> mm-hmm. So this is a little tarot spread that I came up with, and you guys can do it on your own if you'd like. Feel free to share it in the Discord server um, or, yeah, tag us in social media. But so this is a three card spread focused on the current energies for the Sturgeon Moon. So the first question is, what abundance am I currently neglecting? So like kind of what are you not paying attention to that you should be paying attention to what tomato is rotting on the vine right now all of them (laughs) (laughs) and then what skills should i be focusing on during this time what do you need to focus in on and hone in on so that way it will benefit you in the future and then lastly what loose ends still require your attention what are you forgetting about so we have the the one side of the abundance that you need to pay attention to because you need to be preserving that right for later and then we have the yes but also what are the other things maybe the more menial tasks that you still need to pay attention to mm-hmm. all right all right mm-hmm. yeah so let then it- I have my little shadow work prompts too. Or do you guys want to talk about the tarot uh, spread? No, I'm just looking at this like I really need to do this one because <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, I don't know. What do I need to focus on? Shh. Everything. <laughs> Get my life together. <laughs> yeah, this would be a good tarot spread to kind of like yeah. check in because I yeah. like I'm I, I'm already trying to answer the questions to myself too, and it's like, well, that's the point of the tarot reading, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Exactly. So the shadow work prompts will be more of like the self reflection, mm-hmm. and they do have kind of similar themes. They're meant to go kind of with the tarot spread. Okay. But I've got two shadow work prompts for you guys for the Sturgeon Moon. The first one is what is your process with long-term goals or projects? Do you enjoy them? Do you loathe them? Do you find yourself forgetting them before they come to pass or micromanaging them too much? Why do you think you feel this way about long-term projects and goals? (gasps) Me trying to edit that OBS video and I try to pace myself and I'm just, now I'm at this point of like, I'm so sick of it. I literally named it in my, like the save file is called OBS shit I'm sick of. Like I'm so over editing and producing this OBS tutorial and it is a very big project. I mean, God. Mm -hmm. Um, I I like long-term goals because I like to have something to work towards, but at the same time, I want it to be done and I want to mm-hmm. have achieved the thing already. I'm, like, an, I'm like, an instant <laughs> gratification kind of person. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's like if I have like a big long term goal that I'm working on, I like to have a bunch of sm- short term goals also so that I can get that yeah. instant gratification feeling while still working on these long term goals um, because I need. I need some things like the shiny happy to keep me going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh. I'm a daily to-do list type of person, and I'm a big fan of the get out of bed to-do list (laughs) option and the feed yourself to-do list option. Oh, I fail that one a lot. (laughs) It's just like the things I know I'm going to do, I I have to add this on. But like with long-term stuff, I I realized this the other day, self-report. I don't think I've ever applied myself in my life. (laughs) <laughs> like i don't think i've ever See, like worked hard on something i ever. work hard on almost everything to the point of constant burnout and that's what i find like what i'm so proud of celestial cafe for is we're closing in on running this for a year together mm-hmm. um this is yeah, the longest crazy. running project that i've ever done besides just like my like hey shady lady i guess at large but even hey shady lady at large is um inconsistent over the the six or seven years that I've been running it. This has stayed consistent. This has stayed true. It stayed manageable. And I think that 
that it is evidence to me that I have grown as a creator and a person that I'm able to manage a long-term project like this. Um, and it, it's, you know, of course there's multiple people involved in this. I've tried to run, I've run podcasts since I was 18, um, mold, like with, with a mm -hmm. cast usually of about four people. I just find four is a really nice number for a round table discussion of stuff. Um, yeah. But it's been miss. This works. Start this up. It works, but it didn't work this. So it's been so many learning moments of like, why did this one fail? Why did that fail? How can I do it better? How can I do it better? Um, and a, a lot of it has been um, going too fast right out of the gate. Um, and this is very marathon runners, like pacing yourself. <laughs> so instead of like, hey, we're gonna start Celestial Cafe podcast and all four of us need to do this in one week and the next week we're gonna do this. It's like, hey, let's, you know, let's take it, take it easy and hang out and chat for a couple hours once a month. Yeah. And then after mm -hmm. that feels like it works well, oh, you know, five, six months later, it's like, hey, you wanna step it up a little bit? Not too crazy, we're not going too far. We're just, and how can we- We're not doing every week. And imagine. how can we, God imagine, um, <laughs> how can we take, <laughs> the how can we take this and and break it up into smaller bits that can be spread out over a longer period of time too so it's yeah. it's like trying to apply lessons to make this sustainable mm -hmm. over a long period of time and i think that's really important for any long-term project um mm -hmm. i saw soccer k in chat saying short-term goals are the key to achieve our big visions and plans anything you see online mm -hmm. that's talking about making a making a goal for yourself a five-year plan or whatever five-year vision plan like uh, what do you where do you want to be in a year and then break that up into if you want to be if you want to be at that spot in a year where do you need to be six months from now and then take that mm -hmm. okay if you're going to get there in six months what do you need to do every like by the third month in like where do you need to be by the third month in and then if you want to that third month yeah. spot what do you need to do each month to get that and break it up into bite-sized pieces over uh the p but you've got to break it down into steps for yourself because smart goals yeah yeah, yeah. I think one thing too that's important to denote here is it's this works when you start with a large goal and then break it down into your smaller goals. You have to start yeah. with the long term and then create the short term from that because I know I get into this habit where eventually like I'll I'll be creating my like my like weekly habits and things like that and I get into a rhythm but then eventually that rhythm will no longer align with what I want long term. So it's really important to like yeah. check back in with yourself and make sure that, okay, this is what I've been doing the past three weeks. Is this, is this going to take me in the direction of where I want to go or not? Like, what do I need to change? Oh, I do have one more oh. shadow oh. work prompt oh, okay. too. Dang. All right. <laughs> so this is the last one. What's one skill that you've always wanted to learn? Why haven't you? What is holding you back from trying? Emotion management. Energy, <laughs> getting strong, self-discipline like is a big strong. one for me. Dukes Lee wants to just be that giant and muscular <laughs> Shiva meme. <laughs> I do. I I want to lift a weight. I would like know? to be strong. <laughs> just as well. a weight. <laughs> one weight. That's it. All right. I, I've yeah, never really tried that. That's before. the end of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to chat a little bit about the Lionsgate portal. We probably should have done this closer to the astrology section, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> it was lit. So we Lion had important fish to talk about. That's true. <laughs> we that's did. true. Um, so <laughs> the Lionsgate portal um, is something that happens every year. Um, it's around August. It's not just around August. It's literally the 8th of August every year. It's the 8-8 portal. And so if you're into like new... It, I, Honestly, I could do a whole episode on this because I, I want to dig into like the people that debate about, you know, portals and whether they're harnessing energy in a good or a bad way. I've got I'm so cute. I, I dig into those little rabbit holes all the time. But I'm going to stay on the surface of this and just go at this from a numerological, um, energetical, astrological, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, so the Lionsgate portal happens every August on the 8th, it's the 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, and another thing that is special about the Lionsgate portal is that this astrologically is lining up um, during a time where Sirius is lined up with the sun, which is lined up with the earth and it's lined up with Orion's belt too. Um, 
and it creates that like like think of Ryan's belt the three dots of Orion's belt this is the same shape that mm-hmm. the sun earth and Sirius are making and Sirius is the galactic sun right Dukes you'll have to help me out here um I'm not the best <laughs> with space I kind of like when we're coming to an astronomy instead of astrology here but if I'm understanding our solar system is part of a larger galactic system that Sirius is the master star of. Um, and so we're one sure. little galaxy in Sirius's big solar system or bit. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're a smaller galaxy yeah. in a larger solar system. And Sirius is the major star, the major sun of that, the, the, the dog star. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, Woof. this would be of Sirius Black. Um, and we Sirius is a, a word that pops up and you'll see it everywhere. Anytime people try to incorporate witchy elements to things, Sirius is going to be a word that's used all the time. Um, yeah. So when these things line up, Sirius and the sun, our sun and um, Earth, then it's supposed to be this just like projector of energy down into us. Right. So we're receiving all these light codes. We're getting reset. Um, and this is uh, also happening um, during Leo season, which is where Lion's Gate portal comes from, Leo the Lion. Um, and this is supposed to be a great manifestation time. Uh, really good for reset too. Um, and from what I understand, this is also uh, linked up with Scorpius energy. I forget where I saw that and why. That is the case, okay. but um, uh, Scorpius, Scorpio. Sorry, Harry Potter is on my mind. <laughs> Scorpius <laughs> Malfoy really said hello. Um, uh, Scorpio energy, but um, I think because of the number eight, I think so too. I think eight. Yeah, I think that, it's the numerology. Yeah. yeah, it's the numerology behind behind eight. The eighth house um, lines up with Scorpio, so this is all about power transformation, um, energy, passion, uh, kind of like the occult, dark, macabre, sexual energy. Um, I think sex magic would be really potent right now if that is something yeah. that lines up with your personal practices. Any type of manifestation magic is going to be really potent and really powerful. And the Lionsgate portal is usually open from like. It, around the 8th but it usually goes up to around the 12th or 13th that starts around the 4th or the 5th the portal kind of things start to kind of line up and you start to kind of so like same with the full moon energy like right now we're able to talk about the full moon and feel its effects because we're a couple of days away from it so it's the same with the Lionsgate mm-hmm. portal you got about a week around the 8-8 eight, eight mark um, and so yeah. that 8 symbol we, we saw this a lot happen with uh, February 2nd 2022 this year there was two 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 energy off the charts this year um Mm -hmm. And that we always have a February 2nd. We don't always have a February 2nd, 2022. Um, Next year, it's going to be 2023. It's not going to be as many. So if we were in like 1988, the Lionsgate portal of 1988 was probably pretty strong because that's 8888, right? So the the point here is like we're getting into the numerology of repeating numbers. And when numbers, you know, if you're a tarot reader, when you start to see numbers popping up, you get the eight of wands and you get the what's the eight in the major arcana? Um, um so before the strength? hermit strength card strength it's strength yeah so yeah. you get the strength card you get the eight of wands and you get the eight of cups you're like oh my gosh there's a lot of eight energy and then we want to think about what eight energy represents throughout all of the tarot and a lot of times it does feel like i think the word perseverance is a really good word which was something panthera used with the sturgeon mm-hmm. moon um a lot of the eights are about seeing a harvest start to produce um pushing through a little bit longer lots of energy has been poured into something and we're reaching we're 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 close to the climax we're reaching a climactic point um but we have to continue to put energy into it we can't it's not going to do it by itself um and if you stop the momentum and again i'm i feel like i'm talking with like sexual like like terminology here but if you stop the energy the climax is not going to happen and then you're just going to be left right. feeling like you know, like <laughs> like that <laughs> feeling of almost <laughs> the almost sneezing and then the sneeze dries up and you're like shit that would have felt so good like um the release mm-hmm. right um and yeah. that that is the kind of energy we're we're sort of focusing in on around the lion's gate portal um the, this almost moment and pushing a little bit harder with what we're doing mm-hmm. um and another reason why eight is uh 
you know, whatever is because when you flip it on, you know, whatever really pro. Okay. Let me, let me, let me try that sentence again. (laughs) Another reason why eight is seen as such an abundant number, why it's seen as such a, is because when you flip it on the side, it's an infinity symbol. It looks like an infinity symbol, right? So it's constant. It's the, the Ouroboros energy, the snake eating its own tail rebirth. Rebirth is a big thing. And Dugsley was talking about foundations crumbling and rebuilding out of it. I've been feeling phoenix energy for so long like and cocoon energy the caterpillar dissolving itself to birth a new even more majestic creature um so you could do some really powerful manifestation magic if you wanted to right now if that lines up with your personal practice um i do think that that sex magic would be with this leo shit would be uh very (laughs) i know that not everyone like lines up with that but i i want to i want to drop that on your lap and let you do with it what you will. The Scorpio kind of link in coming with those eights. Um, also, this might be known, but I, I feel like it's important to insert here since we are talking about sex magic, but does not have to be performed with a partner. No, it doesn't. Either. No, no it doesn't. So don't push yourself <laughs> into a situation that you don't want to be in just for magic yeah, purposes, right? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Protect it's, yourself. It's, and... We're using the word climax. That doesn't need two people. Um, right. So, yeah, um, just like sucking my own thing, says the word. <laughs> so, no. um, but you could do you could do any kind of manifestation energy. We've got the full moon on Thursday. You could do some full moon rituals, uh, it, anything like that. Even if it's just mindful meditation, journaling, um, uh, building yourself an altar and pouring intention into things. Um, it's however you want, however you feel like you want to try yeah. to manifest. Um, and I think that that what I would try to manifest manifest right now, if I was giving a recommendation and if I were doing this for myself, it would be the strength, eight card of tarot, the strength to push through this last hill and not lose my momentum. It's not just about momentum, though. It's the willpower to not give up when all of these things are getting thrown at you and it feels overwhelming and you feel like you're making a mistake or something like that. Like, like I talk about how I felt like I got punished with my broken arm. Um, in spite of those feelings and emotions I have of feeling punished and, oh, universe, how could you do this to me? The kind of victim mentality that really poured into me with that. Um, pushing through those feelings and not quitting just because it's easy to feel defeated and victimized right now with all of the shit that life keeps pummeling at you because are you going to go hungry through winter or are you going to have the shit harvested and stored away and are you going to be able to feed yourself through winter right okay that's 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 also interesting because a tarot reading i did uh for myself the other day i pulled like the seven of wands uh which is all about like defending uh your stuff and the strength card and um i was just like and it was like stop don't give up and i was like yeah yeah that's and that's just like the general theme right now like um oh it's seven of wands reverse like getting frustrated and you know and just and just rooting into what we know capital k know (laughs) yeah it's good for ourselves you know and and sort of six of swords mentality Mm -hmm. we know what's good for us so we have to Mm -hmm. release that which is less than Mm -hmm. good uh move forward regardless Mm -hmm. it's important right now Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think that's going to wrap up our um, Celestial Cafe episode for the full moon in Aquarius. Um, So if you would like to, if you're listening on podcasting platforms on Spotify or um, Apple Podcasts and you want to leave us a review, it would be really helpful. You can uh, check out our website at celestialcafe.org to get links to all of our social media like Instagram, uh, Twitter. We have a Discord server if you want to join the conversation um, and share your tarot spread that you did with um, Panthera's tarot uh with panthera's tarot spread (laughs) share the cards you pulled for (laughs) panthera's tarot spread um and uh, you can get a link to our youtube channel where you can watch the video podcast once we get it uploaded over to youtube and um find the twitch link so you can join us live for the next one which is going to be on the 23rd of august we have not got our topic picked out yet but you can rest assured that it will be very cool and interesting so um, we have a we have a whole list of potential uh, topics Mm -hmm. but of course we would love to hear what you would love to hear about yes yes 
Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's everything for Celestial Cafe. Um, for Hey Shady Lady, um, over here, I'm trying to get my OBS tutorial put up on YouTube. I still got a, I got a eight of eight energy push my way through it. I'm on the very end of it. It's just oh so tedious and I'm so sick of it. Um, but I'm also hoping to get back into my streaming schedule coming up here. So I, and by schedule, I mean just streaming at all besides Celestial Cafe, but I'm wanting to do my arm. It's, it, I can't game with a broken arm, right? So it really just threw my whole streaming momentum off, but I'm hoping to get some Minecraft and some Stardew Valley back on my channel and start to just hang out and play some games. I also want to do some narrative games. I miss going through a whole story with, with, you know a community there to experience it with me so i'm, I'm gonna try to find some good narrative games that i want to play and i think that's that's everything i got to say um panthera what do you got coming up oh so i've got the last uh ren fair weekend this weekend and then following that i'm going to be getting back on the the stream train hopefully so i was hoping to stream this thursday but i don't think that's gonna happen i had something come up so but following week, I should be getting back into the YouTube grind, uh, back into Twitch, hoping to be launching a whole new shop update on my website. So new tarot spreads, physical items. I've got a bunch of money bowls that will be going out. So it's spell kits and things cool. like that are up your alley. Definitely check it out. I've got some really cool glass, like green gr glass bowls that will be turning into money bowls here soon. Ooh. So I'm really excited. But yeah, so lots of cool stuff coming up. I do mostly tarot readings on my channel. Um, but thinking about doing like some other stuff too here soon. So we'll see. I haven't decided yet. I also do D&D uh, &D every Wednesday on NB Wild's channel. So that will be tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. And there I play uh, Riley Renwood. And she just had a secret unveil to the rest mm. of the party. <laughs> what and the? And and I'm not going to oh. tell you guys because you have to watch it. But <laughs> she got real. We almost had a TPK. It was scary. So Ooh, okay. <laughs> definitely watch. Um, when all of that is on YouTube as well, too, if you want to catch up. So all yeah, right. cool. Fuchsia, what you got coming up? Um. Well, I'm... I finish my summer job tomorrow, which means I'm finally like being I'll free. have I'll be free. I'll have time to like really get back into my YouTube channel, which I'm really excited about. Gonna be finally getting back to my tarot deck reviews that I have not done in forever. And um just like lots of like oh Halloween slash Samhain is coming up, so I'm gonna get back mm. into like my witchy yes. Halloween crafting and I'm really excited. But also Halfway through this podcast, I got an email that I got a review key for this game that, that just came out today that's called Cartomancy Anthology, and it's all about uh, 22 different games um, in this anthology that tells this, like, that all relate to different cards of the Major Arcana. So I will be reviewing that on my YouTube cool. channel soon. I'm so excited. So. And Dukes, what nice. you got coming up? Hey. Uh, hmm. What is you did up? a tarot well, stream. I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to thank everyone who popped by my stream a few days ago. Uh, that, that's going to be a more normal thing than I do. I do tarot readings on there. I might have to get a, a key as well to play that game because uh, it's a tarot game. You, it, you should. It fits. You should definitely. Yeah. All right. I, I will do my best. <laughs> so maybe we can play a cool little indie tarot game together too. But um, I try to show up once a week to stream. Did did I stream this week? No, I didn't. So I, I should be streaming again this week. Um, what else? Uh, I have a sale going on on Phasey right now. Everything's 11 11 off. Uh, so that's very cool beans. Um, and I will have astrology readings available on Yay. Phasey by the end of the month. So mm -hmm. that'll be really cool. Just something different for me to offer everyone. I'm really excited mm -hmm. to start diving into that on a more serious scale after me studying my ass off <laughs> for a long time and finally feeling comfortable enough to monetize something I'm like really this. I'm really so, excited about those. Oh, thank you. I, I, I'm I excited can't wait to, to get offer my them. first one. So. Oh, that's so exciting. That's great to hear. <laughs> I, I'm excited to offer them. Uh, so thank you all for listening to me today. That should be a taste of what is offered quite soon through my website. Mm -hmm. uh, but cater to you. Hooray. All right. Well, thank right. you everyone so much for listening and we will see you next Tuesday. Oh my God. I said it. <gasps> I didn't mean to say that. 
I meant see you next. Yeah, that's a lie. First Two of all, weeks. see you next Tuesday. See you in. 20, I think my brain 23rd. just went see you in T, and it was just like ha ha ha. Let's just say it. See you. Lies come so easy. It to is us. gonna be, and it's not next Tuesday. But it's gonna be the Tuesday after the twenty third. So see you mm-hmm. two, two Tuesdays. Tuesdays from now. All right. Bye everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.